so hello ladakh welcome to your pedia education so today we are here at iit mandi i got an opportunity to interact with dr siddharth so this interaction is going to be very helpful and informative for the future researchers and those aspirants who are willing to pursue their higher education like phd ms and mtech so first of all dr siddharth thanks for sparing few minutes for us from your busy schedule thank you so before we start with this discussion yeah. can you introduce your academic journey so that people can relate you know more with you mm. you can brief out your research area currently what is the research area you are working here in iit mandi yeah so i did my uh, bachelor's and masters both from us so my bachelor's is from university of arizona right and my masters is from stanford university right and then i worked there for a couple of years and i uh, decided to move back due to personal reasons right 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 and uh, then um, i did my phd uh, at it delhi right i found an interesting problem a doctor approached me for a very interesting problem i oh. liked that problem and so i changed my area of research from being a vlsi person at that time circuit oh. design to uh, biomedical uh, signal processing right. and at that time uh, the whole revolution of machine learning and artificial artificial intelligence was just building up it was not uh, in the public domain and so my path inter intersected naturally with that right. uh, when i started on it i was not uh, personally aware that i going to i will be working in ai and machine learning true but then the whole uh, whole thing kind of went in that direction so i basically uh, um, my phd work was uh, coming up with uh, solutions diagnostic solutions where you can record signals from the brain and diagnose a neurological disorder is it so um this is what uh, so i actually ended up uh, even having my own startup from the work i did from my phd work and so i have a a, a very um uh i'm a, a focus on making sure whatever is done in the research lab gets translated very quickly so so i have this kind of a approach to uh, for my research especially in medical research things get built and they don't get translated Right. they can stay in the publication only true 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 so my work is in this uh, uh, translation domain where i work on technologies which can be rapidly taken into uh, the clinic where doctors can start using it right, right and i enable that through my own uh, startup and so right. i focus mostly on translatable uh, medical technologies right that's my and ai and machine learning obviously comes into it then my circuit background also comes into it okay yeah so you started your journey as a vlsi aspirant yes, right? yes then it yes. totally shifted into application based yeah. on that because i i mean i was at phd level i was looking for an interesting problem okay and uh, a doctor uh, i met a doctor neurologist in delhi and after he found out that i studied at stanford he uh, and i am looking for my phd a problem he suggested a problem to me that this is what we face in the clinic True. can you provide a solution to us true 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 and uh, i said yeah i mean if I, the best a phd should always be uh, pursued in order to solve a problem right right right, right? and so um, i i remember stephen hawking when he was diagnosed with a, a a horrible disease that will take his life and he was given only few years to live he spent a couple of years just looking for a problem even then he was not in a rush true. to start his phd true 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 so finding the right problem uh which you are passionate about is right. very important in phd right, right, right. so i got an interesting problem which was relevant for the country which was relevant for people and so i changed my direction truly 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 sir yeah. so in today's world the things are working quite differently what i believe mm. especially in this 2000 decade right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so people are more influenced with the technology and they want to follow the technology trend mm -hmm. so being a researcher being yeah. a seasoned researcher now i will call you a seasoned researcher right yeah so according to you the future aspiring you know phd researcher what they should take into consideration the technology trend or their own interest if you are talking about research definitely or higher education uh um it, what i am about to say is definitely true for them but it is true in general right. choosing a profession just because it's a trend in my opinion is a bad way of thinking about uh, you know professional activities particularly research uh i'll give you an example right um so the man who is who probably most people will credit with this ai ml revolution jeffrey hinton right true right he was working on uh, uh neural networks when nobody was working on neural networks 
I remember in 2008, uh, I was at Stanford and the, one of the most famous uh, professors of artificial intelligence, Andrew Eng, right. uh, he was teaching this course and uh, he uh, and that course is available online. You can actually see that video online right. you, uh, on YouTube and uh, he, he was talking about classical and machine learning techniques and then he came on to uh, neural networks right. and he says neural network is not used anymore and it is an old thing that never worked out. And the light went away and he wasn't bothered. He said neural networks is basically it looked like he was not very excited about neural networks. So even though there was no light, he just he carried on and very soon he moved on. This is a dead area right, right. and he moved on. 2008 I'm talking about and Andrew Eng, who's everybody who takes yes, courses, yes. he takes his courses. Okay. And within four years, the whole game changed. Nobody is doing what he was teaching in that course and everybody is doing deep learning neural networks, right? And why was this made possible? This was made possible because a handful of people continue to work on their passion. Right. There were few people who said, I don't care what is the trend. Right, right, right. I will care. In fact, not only they were, they were working on something that was unknown. They were working on something that was tried and had failed. Right, right. But they kept working. True, true, true. And they ma made uh, these algorithms computationally eff efficient to the point that, in my opinion, the revolution that we are seeing is not just once in a generation. It's almost on par with the, let's say the printing press revolution right, 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 right okay so following what you believe in is not only uh, fulfilling that's in my opinion the best way to pursue excellence right to be successful right so if you are just following a trend there is always the chance that when the trend gets over because you're following the trend because it has already started it already take the other direction it has already come up and then soon it will drop Right, right. So if you don't have any foundation of your own, right, right. when the trend goes away, right, right. then you'll be chasing some other trend right, right. and you're, you will constantly be chasing, chasing, chasing. True, true, true. You'll always be behind the game. True, 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 true. Right? So to be in front of the game is to lead the game. And if you want to lead the game, you have to do what you believe in. Truly said, I also have one example for this. You will comply with me. If you don't have a good command over physics in 12th class, 11th class, yeah. then you will face trouble in every engineering. Yes. Be it computer science, be it electrical, yes. be it mechanical. Yes. So there are some things which are must for your yes. progress. Yes. 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 So now, Dr. Siddharth, I'm coming to one world is very, you know, fearing sometimes for the student mm. and form it's a very innovative world that mm. is interdisciplinary world. Mm -hmm. So, how you define interdisciplinary research? What is your view on interdisciplinary research? So, um, somebody I think said, I don't know who said it, that there are the best ideas come when you combine two different ideas. There are generally no new ideas, right? It's only when two different ideas, two, one idea is taken into a different domain, go to, right? And that's when the creation happens. Right, right. And so, right now, sticking to one domain often because there's so many, there's so much research is going on. Right. If you just stick to one thing and nothing else, it's very hard to uh, do innovation, true innovation, right? Yeah. So, uh, the sometimes the easiest way to innovate is to find some some way of looking at some things in a different area different where nobody area. has that perspective, right? Right. Right. right? So the advantage often is that you become, uh, you have a unique perspective when you are doing interdisciplinary research. Like I, I am, I work in epilepsy right. and there are certain aspects of neurology where I, my knowledge is actually on par with some of the core neuroscientists oh. who are working in a very small area though, right. And over there, I can uh, bring in my own understanding from engineering and contribute very heavily right. because I have this other knowledge. True, true. Uh, and then from neuroscience, I, I can have uh, this because of that background, I have this uh, understanding in engineering and I can understand what the engineers are doing wrong, why yeah. they are not able to help uh, these doctors because true. they are not understanding them. True, true. Right. So the most important uh, changes and uh, innovation generally happen when somebody has the view of all the people involved who need to be helped, right? right, right? right. The solution and the problem. You need right. to understand both. True. And so if the problem exists in a different domain and the solution is in a different domain. Somebody has to do it. And it is not as hard as people think. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. And second thing, in addition to the same question, mm. obviously you have some lab work here in mm. IIT Mandi, mm. right? Mm. So, how you incorporate into your research lab the real-time application and this tending technology? So, uh, by tending technology, you mean the machine learning? Yeah. This also. Yeah. So, um, 
my approach to solving any problem is uh, or my approach to research is you give me the problem and i'll go wherever the solution takes me right right and so right now it turns out the most of the solutions are if they are being solved by using machine learning and ai i will use that right right so uh, my uh, my particular research is heavily uh, using data that is coming from the clinics so i have machines in various hospitals i have technicians working over there okay. and say so they collect data and i have to make sure that the data is collected in a way that uh, it can be used properly from engineering point of view and the evidence that is built by doing engineering on it on it can be convincing for the doctors to convince them that this is a good solution for them true, true, true. so i have to understand what is being done in the lab and make sure the quality is right right and then i bring it over to my students here right, right. and they build their machine learning and ai models on it right and now coming to this what are the key project currently going in your research lab in iit mundi so i am uh, currently uh, working on uh, building uh, these uh, diagnostic tools for uh, neurological disorders and in particular i am working um, on um, epilepsy okay. and i have a, a running project there where we are collecting data prospectively so this is something where you collect so most of the ai and ml that is done in the medical area what you do is you go back in time and go to let's say a hospital and ask them give me my whatever data you have and i'll do something with it right, right, right. that has many times many shortcomings and many solutions are not possible okay. so what you have to do to do uh, uh, solve certain kinds of problem you have to go into the lab and collect data prospectively that means you let patients come in and then you collect so that is a, a very challenging task so that is one of my project that i'm working on that is a 3 year project and it's already one year has uh, gone right. for that so with that uh, data i hope to build a, a tool where without even doctor expert doctor uh, you can just record the signals and tell whether the person has epilepsy or right. not and another uh, project that i am working on is in uh, ophthalmology that okay. where you work with eye doctors right? right and so there are certain diseases which have progressions uh, over a period of time okay but if you have some data for those patients at earlier time and using machine learning if you can predict whether this person will develop a complication later right, right. and you can do intervention earlier right, right. that will save that person's eyes so you take multiple data of that person and then using ai you are predicting what are the chances of this person developing this condition this entire process itself is interdisciplinary that absolutely absolutely so i have to work with doctors i have right. to work with uh, biological researchers right, right. and we need to understand our needs and we need to understand quality requirements that to for me to build a good ai model what is the quality required and for them to implement this what is the quality required by me for them right that's the work we have to do the reason why i ask this question is still there are many future aspirant who are still living in that stereotype that if you want to become a professor you need to have btech in electrical mtech in electrical PhD in electrical. Mm. So that's why I asked this question. Many students are fearing that sir, whether we should continue PhD in the interdisciplinary area or not. So that's why I asked this question. Our the chair of our school has his bachelor's uh, and I think even master's in physics, oh. and he is the head of our school. Right. right electrical. Right. Uh, right. So uh, it doesn't matter what exactly your background is. Is uh, as long as you have a clarity and uh, your strong fund. foundations are there um you can you can go anywhere uh, i mean that's never a problem what your background is is generally not a problem you might face a student might face some hiccups at one or two places where there might be a requirement for having an electrical engineering degree right, right. that might be there but i think iits are fairly flexible but there will be very few places I yeah yeah and iits are very flexible like that and uh, for example i will be very soon talking to mathematics department probably to uh, supervise a student who has the background mathematics and physics to have the background to do some of the things that i want to do right right, right. so uh, th this is really not a problem no i'm quoting three term one is biomedical in which you're working Mm. one is biotechnology one is bioengineering mm. what is the basic key difference between these two so biomedical actually is uh, so biotechnology let me start with that that is actually uh, generally uh, 
mostly done in uh, uh, you'll find uh, those students in in the bio biosciences departments right. and they are often uh, working on the drug development right. and things which are essentially in the lab right they are working with the um, animal models where they are uh, trying different things on animals so some of my work is in that also right right, right. Uh, i have a student who works in uh, works with m mice live mice and how memory is forming in mouse in mice right, so right. this work is mostly uh, uh, focused on basic sciences great biotechnology is mostly on on basic sciences, basic sciences. yeah and when we say biomedical uh, actually uh, biomedical engineering when we say um, what is generally being done in whenever you find a biomedical engineering uh, department is is most often people who have background in electrical engineering background in computer science okay. who are trying to find solutions in mostly medical related applications and right. some biology related applications using their techniques such as computational models right. you'll find physicists and mathematicians who right. have uh, mathematical techniques with which right. they want to contribute in solving biology or biomedical medical related right. problems. Great, great, great. Yeah. So our next question is Dr. Siddharth, there are many institutions even in Himachal. Uh -huh. right. So it might happen that some student is doing his PhD and MTech from some particular institution, but he's not getting that facilities there. Yes. But he's working in your same research area. Mm -hmm. So if you want to approach you for supervision, mm -hmm. so what kind of flexibility you have in your system basically? Oh, I mean, there are uh, you, there are st uh, st professors are always looking for uh, sincere students. So right. uh, I will be I am working with students who are not uh, part of IIT Mandi right. and who are working, especially in, during the summer, who will be working with me uh, right, right. Over, on certain projects. Right. What what stud what professors are always looking for is sincerity, right. right? And so, if a sincere student is there, willing to work hard then uh, there is the system doesn't prevent any uh, you know anybody from being able to true, true, true. yeah so tomorrow suppose some passionate researcher want to join iit mandi in biomedical research mm -hmm. so he want to work with you he want to collaborate with you yeah. as a phd scholar yes say. yes so what are the key requirement at least you have mm -hmm. from his past education so i would uh, uh, expect um, uh, I mean, if a person is electrical background from engineering background, right. uh, should have a strong understanding of, um, let's say, signals and systems. This is a fundamental course in electrical engineering. Right. And uh, that is something that is going to be needed in most of the applications that I work on, whether it is images, images or signals, right. right? I work with data that comes from okay. the clinic. So that is something that I would uh, heavily uh, um, rely on that person's students understanding on how to uh, uh, how to how does he work with signals and systems right, right, right. Um, and then moreover just uh, um, and, and if the person is coming from a mathematical background or a physics background also then if they have uh, uh, you know if then it, it becomes a little subjective but the training that uh, these two disciplines also gave is fairly rigorous if it is done rigorously if the person is trained well in mathematical and analytical skills right, right. In, most of the things can be picked up so there has to be certain rigor in their approach right, if they right. want to do a phd right. then it has to be about being able to work independently and rigorously and that is primarily what i'm looking for. Right, right, right. So as uh, you are the perfect person to ask answer this question because you have the taste of both education system, mm -hmm. Indian education system as well as the global education system. Mm -hmm. So I believe in India, most of the students decide which campus to join, which university to join on the basis of the placement. That is my opinion. Yes, yes, yes. Especially if you talk about the BTEC and the courses. Yes. And even many students are also looking in the same direction for PhD also, which seems illogical to me. Yes. So what is your take on this when you are going for PhD, you are planning for PhD? Mm -hmm. Up to what level is it correct to think that what will be placement after five years? Can you anticipate what is going to happen after five years? Yeah, you you definitely cannot. I mean, right now I think the economy or the layoffs are going on in Bangalore, and right, right, right. and uh, when I was grad when I graduated from Stanford, there was that great recession of two thousand eight yes, yes, nine, right? Right, right, right? So you think that you have planned ahead, but uh, things can change dramatically, right? What you have in your control is always what how well you have prepared yourself in terms of 
core uh, you know your own own skills your analytical skills and your basics are strong or not right, right, right. so that is an advice i will always give particularly for phd if you are doing phd looking at placements in mind that is really not the best approach right you are doing a phd to master a subject to go into the depth of a subject and if you trust yourself to do that then getting a job will not be a problem for you right, right, right. you have spent 5 years mastering one subject then such a person would never really have any problem finding a job right right, right. okay so uh, for a researcher i would never be as a researcher i would never uh, uh, tell a student to worry about getting a job if you are if you put 5 years of good solid hard work then you will get employment people will value your knowledge right right, right. yeah so, so my last my concluding question to you dr siddhartha is what is the difference between having a phd having a good phd yeah so i mean a, a good phd if you have done a good phd then you have learned or developed skills to do independent research right, right you should be able to take a problem and be able to approach it by understanding what uh, has been done in the past what is missing how is the best approach to solve this problem what is possibly that can be done what is that i don't know and i need to learn about it then you learn that right so a good phd should essentially give a person these skills to be able to look at any problem right. and be able to solve it right. that confidence should be there right. Right. apart from that that obviously there are certain metrics which everybody uses in terms of what kind of uh, work that you have done which can be objectively evaluated by right. looking at their work but these skills even if you don't have great publications but uh, if you have developed these skills and you went into the depth of the problem in totality then i would qualify it as a good phd great great yeah we sound there is a lot to look forward to but we need to wrap up it yeah so thank you so much for your time thank you and for thanks coming. for giving such valuable insight and experiences definitely it's going to help our viewers right thank you thank you so much